Hi everyone, welcome to the Inside Jobs ninth episode. Today's guest is Marsha Hamilton, a mother, military spouse, and a senior executive of a Fortune 500 company. In this episode, Marsha discusses her experiences as a military spouse, as well as sharing some insightful tips on relationships and building a solid support system at home. We hope that you enjoy today's episode, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed, I don't jump or shout about, or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it's all to make you proud, I say. It's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need of my care, because I'm a woman, phenomenally. The excerpt from the poem I just read is from beloved poet Maya Angelou, titled Phenomenal Woman. And when I read this woman's bio, that's exactly what came to mind, a phenomenal woman. This woman not only climbed the ladder of success in corporate America, but she is a mother of three, a mentor, a wife, and not just your average wife, she is a military spouse. Please join me in welcoming Marsha Hamilton. Welcome to the show, Marsha. How are you doing today? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be a part of the Inside Job. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know, um, the quarantine, the severe lockdown that we had that, you know, up until last month, everyone mm -hmm. had to be home. A lot of us, those of us that were not suffering physically, we suffered mentally because we weren't able to see our loved ones, you know, as we please and we were just isolated. While your situation is, might not be as extreme, I could only imagine how you, know, you are able to communicate with your husband. He's not there every day and it's like a virtual communication. H how do you manage that? You know, it's so funny. I read a post from a fellow military spouse online and it said, you know, all um, these individuals that are now under quarantine and not able to see their loved ones will finally get an insight of what it's like to be a military family. And so, yeah, it, it, it can be very difficult um, being a military spouse and not being able to see your loved one when you wish. Clearly, we don't come home to each other at night uh, in our particular um, situation. We're a bit unique from most military family in that um, we chose not to move around. Um, so we stay in one area. We are here in New York, um, epicenter of the pandemic. Um, and my husband, yeah, my husband, of course, um, has traveled to all various um, areas around the world as a part of his naval career. And so for us, even more so, um, being a part um, is even more defined um, in our particular relationship um, as a military couple. Well, how did you guys meet? Um, so huh, that's a funny story. So we met twice. Uh, we met first at a friend's uh, Christmas party and it was just kind of like, hey, I, I've never really met you before. How are you? And we had a really wonderful conversation. Um, I don't think at least I was not looking at him as, oh, look at a potential suitor. You know, it was just a really nice gentleman who was home um, for the holidays on leave. And so we kind of talked. Um, a lot that evening, I kept calling him Air Force guy, um, but you know he's a sailor. <laughs> and then, ironically, later on, um, about four months later, uh, two of our friends decided to get married. Uh, a very close friend of mine was marrying a close friend of his, and we were both in the wedding. And um, of course, he asked um, to be paired with me, and that's how the story began. <laughs> that's good. He knows what he wants yeah definitely <laughs> and um so obviously you're married now so how did this courtship how did you maintain the courtship and eventually get married because i imagine uh, was he away well I, i'm imagining that he is he was already in the navy how did you yeah. keep that up 
So um, I think that's one of the great things about how our courtship started. He was away. He was stationed in California at the time. And so our first couple of dates over the first couple of months were all via phone. So we spent a lot of time having true meaningful conversation, right? You don't typically get to start a relationship like that. It's normally about the facade of what I look like when we're going out, what am I gonna wear? What does my hair look like? Um, and we've been married now for 14 years, um, dated for six, um, together, all together, together for 16 years. So unlike today, when you have all of this technology where you can see each other, people can get in Zoom chats and house party and all these other things. We didn't have that then. We really just had the telephone. And so we really had really great conversations about just life, um, what we were looking to achieve, our likes, our dislikes. And so we really got to know each other on an intimate level in that way through conversation before we progressed further into the dating world. I mean, okay, serious question. Um, how did he look in that Navy in the uniform? Oh my Was gosh, that you know what kept you talking to him? <laughs> I the uniform just does sailor. it, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, the uniform absolutely does it. He, he you know, he's tall. He's six seven and and just slender with Woo! just enough muscles. I know. And so when he puts on those <laughs> dress whites or his dress blues, you know, it just and he's gorgeous too. So it just it absolutely does it. Cherry on top of that beautiful cake. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, how do you um, balance being a mom, a wife, and your career? Um, I think for any spouse, whether you are um, a military spouse or not, um, working, being a wife and being a mom can be very tricky. Um, I spent some time around um, a spiritual leader um, some years ago. And one of the things I took note of was the order of importance in her life. Um, so for me, I, I decided to copy that. So God always comes first. My relationship with God is most important because it feeds me and it feeds my yeah. soul. And then comes my relationship with my husband. It's important for us to have a solid relationship so that we can be solid for our kids. And so after God comes my relationship with my spouse, and then there's my relationship with my kids, where I'm mom, where I am the Uber driver, um, the one who kisses the boo-boo and all that stuff. Um, but that's for me is what helps me to keep balance, remembering what is important and how to take care of yourself from within, so that you're able to pour out onto others. And then the career, I'm guessing that's the last part. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, career comes last. Your family is important. And so even though I have enjoyed great success um, in my life, in my career, I think that, that success has come from making sure that my priorities are where they are in life. And so, you know, you can get caught up with being in the office early and being in the office late, um, but I try not to do that. Are there times when I need to do that? Absolutely. There are times when I need to give a little bit more than what the regular workday um, calls for, but I really try to get it done in that eight and a half hours, uh, maybe through my breaks or my lunches, um, or maybe going in a half an hour early, but I try to be as efficient as I possibly can um, at work so that I'm successful and it doesn't take away from my family life. And, you know, speaking of your career, I was doing some study and a recent Department of Defense survey found that a quarter of military spouses are unemployed. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Well, the military well, life is not an easy life, um, right? So you, you're right, uh, unemployment amongst military spouse um, is about 6% um, higher than the national average. And that's because military families move around a lot. You know, depending on the branch of service that you are in, um, every three years, uh, you're up for orders to a new location. So this year, I can be in New York. Um, next, three years later, I'm in California. Three years after that, I'm in Germany. Three years after that, I'm in Japan. So you can imagine um, that with the constant movement of where your home base is, it's difficult for you to maintain employment um, with any uh, company, um, let alone trying to build a career. So when you, um, how would they know? When you're filling out the information, um, usually they'll, they'll ask if you're a veteran. Do they ask also if you're a spouse, if your spouse is a veteran? How would the 
company that you're applying for a job know that you're even a military spouse if you don't tell them? Um, I mean, you don't necessarily need to disclose, right? Um, but a person's resume, for example, can speak volumes. You know, how comes you're only with a particular job for a certain period of time and then you've moved on? And that's even if you're able to find a job where you are. So, for example, if you're in Japan, um, it may be difficult for you to find employment outside of the military installation, right? So you depend on employment that's on the installation and available to you, which may not take advantage of your um, educational background, right? It's just what I can find to busy myself and to make some money from, um, for myself. Some companies do give preference to military spouses. And so a spouse may disclose on their application that they are a military spouse because there are companies that will give preference um, to military spouses. You know, and that's a great point, uh, Marsha. And, you know, it kind of segues into my next question for you. And it's, what are some of the challenges that you have faced as a military spouse in your career journey? Um, well, definitely trying to be a mom and a spouse with my husband being gone as much as he is gone, I'm left to balance our household. So if the kids are sick or parent teacher conferences, whatever it is, that falls on my shoulder, and don't get me wrong, my husband is extremely supportive even from afar. He attends parent teacher conferences via video calls, so he's as supportive as he can be given the circumstances. But here on the home front, basically it's left up to me to balance and hold our household together, as well as meet all the obligations that I need to meet um, for work. Um, so yeah. How old, are you? How old are your children? So we have three kids. Um, we have Caitlin, who's 18, and Spencer, who is 12, and Paige, who's six. Jesus, so you have all the way up there, almost an adult, to yeah. uh, still live barely just out of a toddler, sick, a six-year-old. Yeah. So yeah, you have a busy household, I can imagine, over there. Yes, and you, definitely. You know, with the kids and your husband being away, and when it comes to um, you catering, being the wife, what are some, you know, some tips for those military wives that are out there? What tips, you know, what do you do to keep the relationship spicy? <laughs> spicy. <laughs> <laughs> spicy and strong, oh. strong and spicy, spicy and strong. <laughs> so let's focus on how do we keep our relationship strong? So for me, unless my husband is on deployment, we speak to each other almost every day, sometimes more than once a day. There's always a check-in. It could be literally just a 30-second call. Hey, just calling to let you know that my day's going to be busy today. You may not hear from me to an hour or two of communicating, just updating each other on, our, on what happened on that particular day. Um, but we are always in communication with each other. Uh, and then we remember to just set time aside for us, right? So there's sometimes we get on the phone and it's a lot about what's going on with our son and how can we get him to improve in school and our older daughter who's in college and how can we get her to focus more and, you know, everything else. And there are just times when we go, hey, we're not going to talk about the kids today. We're just going to focus on us. We're going to focus on our relationship. And, you know, we'll talk about things we'd like to do. Uh, when we get together next. Uh, well, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go for vacation next year? We're going to just do something together. Uh, my husband is great at sending lovely surprises uh, through the mail. So there are times when I come home and, you know, there is a beautiful gift or there's Aww. just flowers just because. Um, and I try to do the same, although I will admittedly say I'm not as good at it as he is. Um, that's definitely his <laughs> strength. Um, but I think we just try to keep each other um, aware that, hey, you are my center. I'm focused on you. I love you. I appreciate what you bring to this relationship. And it's important um, as a couple that you do do that, that you constantly remind the other party that they are important in this relationship and that you do value what they bring um, to the relationship. Oftentimes, that get, it gets lost, especially when you've been married for years. And then you have the other party starting to feel like they're not valued. Um, and that spice that you talk about all of a sudden feels missing, right? Because we're yeah. not talking about the things that we enjoy about each other. You know, the fact that I loved your smile the first time I saw you, or you always says, oh, I love your legs. You know, those little things are important. And, they, and I, I think those things help to keep a marriage a bit spicy. Yeah, and I think that's good advice for 
any sort of marriage, you know, uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. communication. Communication is key, whether you are 30 minutes or 3,000, however many miles away, it is great, you know, that you communicate with each other and don't take each other for granted. And these little gifts, I love little gifts. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the greatest as, yeah, I'm not 50 50. I would say with myself and my husband, it's a 50 50 uh, thing with the gift given, but I definitely love, love, love gifts. And, you know, it's not the most important thing, it's cherishing the person. And so I think that's great advice for mm -hmm. whether you are a military spouse or not. So, you know, thank you so much on that. You know, we've been talking about how hard it is being a military spouse, but what are some of the benefits uh, to being a military spouse? Well, I mean, I think we get a unique view into a world that unless you're a part of it, it's difficult to explain. So the things that I've enjoyed the most is I get to see a lot of beautiful places. So while my husband travels around and, and we are centrally located here in New York, um, we do try to make sure we see each other every month or so. So I've gotten to see some really beautiful places around the country. I, you know, we spent um, the summer in Japan, you know, we spent summers in Hawaii. So I've enjoyed even here on the in state side, we've enjoyed going to other states that we never would have ventured out to see. So definitely one of the benefits or one of the joy of being a military family is that you get to see a lot of wonderful places. You get to learn a lot about different cultures. Um, one of my thing is making sure that we, we take something home um, as just a, a keepsake from wherever. So I have like this beautiful um, white, stone um sculpture off the last oh. supper from greece that i absolutely just love um so you know that that's one of the very small benefits uh that there is to being a military spouse you get to see the world and, and don't you find that um i wouldn't know but um i imagine so my husband when we met i met him on vacation so i lived in los angeles he lived in London, we met at a pub. And so for those X amount of months where we were communicating, lucky for us, WhatsApp, we had that. So we oh, communicated yeah. that way, because um, you know we've only been married last, last year. So we had that sort of communication, but I found that we did not take each other for granted. Like even he would call in every single day and check in and sometimes, he would be tired and it's just that he's so tired, but he's just checking in, you know, to let me know that he got home safely. And I find that I, I don't take him for granted now, but it's like when, you know, the person isn't there physically, you treasure mm -hmm. each moment. And I can imagine, you know, based on what you're saying, that might be another benefit is you, you, you don't take each other for granted as much because the person is not in front of you like that all the time. So, um, and vacation again, that's definitely something that's good. Now I mentioned earlier that you are a mentor. Um, what advice would you give to a new military spouse or even a senior one that's thinking, you know what, this is too hard. Um, you know, cause long distance relationships, uh, uh, it's tough. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying it before and it didn't work for me. It worked this time. But what advice would you give to a newbie? So I think it is extremely important for you to have a support system. So even though, again, we're centrally located here in New York, um, we are a part of the Family Readiness Group at Fort Hamilton Army Base. And so there's a core group of military spouses there um, that I am very close with. And they have um, become a bedrock to me. So if I'm running late due to traffic, for example, and I can't get there to pick my kids up on time um, from daycare on base, you know, I can reach out and go, hey, can you grab, can you grab my son? Can you grab my daughter? So it's really important for you to have a, a strong support system around you. Now for many military spouses, you are new to a state you are new to an installation, so you don't have that built-in family support. How do you find that? 
become involved with your family readiness group. Um, make sure you go to meetings. Um, know who your ombudsman is. And the ombudsman is the person that is basically a liaison between yourself and your husband's command. So if there's an issue, um, they help you to resolve it. Um, if there are certain paperwork or processes that you're trying to navigate and your husband is not around, for example, they can help mm -hmm. you to navigate that as well. Um, if your husband is away, um, and I know I keep saying husband, um, so I'm just going to translate to saying spouse because there are men and women that are serving um, beside our service members, right? So if your spouse is not here and there's something that you need uh, to communicate to them, then that person is your go-to. Um, generally, they will have monthly meetings, your family readiness group that you can attend. And that's a great way for you um, to build, meet other military spouses and build a network around yourself. Um, and don't be afraid to volunteer at your child's local school, for example. Volunteering is a great way for you to one network. It's an, another way for you to um, make friends with other spouses, um, and that also helps you to, to build a network. But it's important that you have that network, that support system. It's part of what helps you to navigate what can be a very tumultuous um, life in the military. So um, this group, is there one in every state? I know you mentioned New York, but uh, for those that might be in a different state, so How every every command information. Every command has a, a a version of a family readiness group, right? So in okay. um, naval life, we call a fam family readiness group. Um, but the the military itself has a great support system built in for families. It's whether or not you're willing to put the work in. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes you're navigating through red tape. Sometimes the person who's in charge may not be the person that you feel is the nicest or, or maybe they're not the greatest. Um, but there are systems that are in place um, for you to tap into, for you to find support. Um, your morale and welfare um, group on your basis, for example, will have different activities that you can take your kids to, different activities that you can get involved with. Um, to get out into the community and to see different things. So no matter what, what branch of service, um, your command structure has that in place for you. That's great. That's great advice, you know, and um, it's just important for you to have some sort of a network, mm -hmm. some sort network, some sort of family, you know, belonging to a community. Really that, that is mm -hmm. very important. And thank you so and much again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that um, not everyone is an extrovert. And so some people are introverts and you may not want to go out and socialize. You may not want to volunteer um, at your child's school. But a really great resource for me was militarysource.com. Um, um, if you go on there and pretty much plug in anything that you're looking for, anything that you're trying to understand about military life, you are sure to find an article or a resource that you can tap into as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, talking about your career, and you know, balancing everything. What would you say is one thing that you think it's very important to know after or to be prepared for after the military? Um, so I think it's important for couples to invest in themselves, right? So um, there are great benefits to being a part of the military. Um, but once you're no longer a part of the military, those things go away. So how do you uh, take those things now to ensure that when you have retired or when you've decided that this career is no longer for you, um, your life is in a better place? And for us, that's been investing, right? Um, so like I said, I'm here in New York where my husband gets stationed all around the country. So we're big on investing um, in real estate. Um, we've invested in several pieces of real estate that we believe will invest in us for life after the military, for me, for life after um, my job in the private sector. And it's something that we will have to be able to pass along um, to our kids, which um, is important to us. Creating generational wealth is something that our parents did not have being immigrants to this country. They were not able to pass that on to us, right? We They planted the seed and we are what germinated um, from those seeds. So we want to make sure we continue to make life better as the generation, generations go along. So I think investing while you're in the military, not just living in military housing and throwing your BH away every single month, but taking those dollars and investing it so you can get a return on the money that you're receiving. 
And that is an excellent point because I actually know quite a few veterans, you know, a few of my friends went off to the army and they went off, you know, straight out of high school and now they're back and they don't have any money. And then it's also hard for them to get a job because they don't have the experience. And so that's a very, very, very important point. And I think, like you say, you know, you don't even think about it when you're in the moment. So great. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, making sure that, that when you're exiting the military, um, and my husband is preparing to retire. And so we have done a lot of investing in what does your life look after the military? How do we make sure that we can prepare a resume, for example, that takes your skills that you have learned in the military and translate that into what we would call civilian language, right? So an employer can see how they would benefit from empl um, employing you as a veteran. Um, and, you know, I may be biased, but hiring somebody who has been in the military is one of the best things a company can do um, because somebody that's been in the military is very disciplined. They're very structured um, and they're about meeting goals and meeting deadlines and every corporation can benefit from that. So, you know, exiting the military, making sure that you are financially prepared to do so, uh, making sure that you have taken all your classes and made all the investments in yourself so that you can sell yourself now into a whole different world is something that's extremely important. Thank you. Great point, Marsha. Declan's gonna All have to right. find a way to put that in. That that is a really, really good point. I'm telling you, I've known people that have gone away and they come back and it's they're like, lost. They're yeah. lost, and unfortunately, some of them go down the wrong path. Yeah, no, you know, so, they don't take advantage of like the educational yeah. benefits. There's so many great things, not just for the service member, but even for the spouse. There's a lot of scholarship opportunities and other educational benefits that they can take advantage of um, to help better themselves. Marsha, thank you so much again for agreeing to be a part of my show. Um, like I mentioned, you know, someone who reached out to me on social media and they were asking, would I have a military spouse? Because they are a newbie. And this is a true story. They are a newbie. And so uh, when I saw your profile and I reached out to you, I was so happy that you agreed to do it because you're helping someone out there. And a lot of times we overlook the military spouses and we just focus on those that are in the military. But you guys are also heroes because you're holding it down at the home front for the family. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much again for being a part of this show. You are a phenomenal woman. You guys, you know, the woman, you're the only one that's a married and a single, single parent mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, so God bless you on that. And for all of you guys out there, thank you so much for continuing tuning into the inside job. Don't forget next week, Thursday, at 8 p.m. British summertime, we will have a brand new episode. Thank you guys again. God bless and stay safe.